I'm Ryan from Basil Food Journal and welcome to our channel or welcome back if it's your second or third time here. Uh, today we're going to be making um, stuffed cue ball squash and a cue ball squash, which we have a cute little guy right here. It is a hybrid of zucchini and it is this little green guy, they're almost always this exact size, um, a light pale green with little white dots. Um, and the way the cue ball squash came around was in the early 1990s, there was a seed developer who went around and specifically sought out squashes that were particularly small and particularly round. And he ended up crossbreeding them for quite a few years up until about 1999 when the cue ball squash was officially, I would created the hybrid itself was created and it kind of it's a little bit sweet but it's also it's kind of sweet but it's more hearty i would say than a normal zucchini um, and what we're going to do today is cut off tops and then stuff them with some rice stir fry so to start out we are taking we're gonna prep our cue ball squash. So what we're gonna to do to prep them is because we want them to have a little hat, we're gonna cut them. If you want it to have a hat. Yeah, like a little hat that's gonna sit on top of the filling. Oh yeah. And just take that guy out. And now you can see right in there that it's just, it's very similar to the texture of a zucchini. And what I'm gonna do is take my little ice cream scoop and I'm gonna scoop out a little bit of the center. Now, personally, I'm going to save the, it's not really guts because it's not um, inedible seeds. That's kind of like the difference between this and um, a pumpkin or- Or a regular zucchini. Uh, not even a regular zucchini because if you think about it, you still can, use and fry um, zucchini with the seeds left in. But if you think about like a pumpkin or um, even a, an acorn squash, a butternut squash, you have to remove those seeds and because they don't really end up being, uh, I think they are edible, but not pleasantly really. But here you can see that the seeds are really well incorporated with the, center of the squash. So what I'm gonna do is I'm saving the middle and I'm eventually going to boil that, drain it, and make some mashed squash afterwards. But here we have like a perfectly little hollowed out ball squash. And I like to leave probably about a half an inch around um, just so it still has that body and you still get to taste the cue ball squash without just ending up with the skin, although the skin is completely edible. Um, and it's very similar to zucchini skin in that it ends up cutting like butter almost. So you have that and then he has his little hat. After you have your cue ball squash all scooped out, you're gonna put them in whatever baking dish that you have or um, even a pan would work. And what you're gonna do is take a little bit of olive oil or you can use avocado oil, grapeseed oil, whatever you feel like. But you're just gonna drizzle, drizzle a little bit of olive oil on top so that it gets inside of the squash. And then a little bit more focused on the outside of them so that it'll be completely coated when we go to turn them around. Now, before we get our hands involved too much, I'm gonna do a little bit of salt and pepper. And I don't mess with is take them and kind of just make sure that that olive oil is reaching most parts of everything. You know, everything's going to eventually get coated. You don't have to worry about it being perfect. Um, but just so that it feels like they all make a little bit of contact and we're gonna put them upside down. Here. 
And then we're gonna do the same thing to the tops, put them in a little smaller dish on the side. roasting we are going to start prepping for the rice filling so I just have some stuff from my fridge here that either I need to get rid of or I had laying around had some extra so we're gonna use two or three cloves of garlic uh, probably about two I need too many I always want to use more garlic than I need to that's for sure a lot of people really like garlic. It's so good. Um, we have two cloves of garlic. What we're gonna do is to release all of the juice from the cloves of garlic before you cut it, it's best to crush it. And it's the easiest way to peel garlic if you don't need it sliced or to look a certain type of way because it always just comes right off. Nothing special. You can just and mushrooms are super duper flavorful and an awesome base for any type of vegetable stock. Um, so I always keep my mushroom stems. You can also, of course, chop them up and eat them as well, but I like to keep them on the side because they are so good in any type of veggie broth that I end up making. So I'm gonna end up, I'm gonna end up chopping these. Um, roughly, so we're not going to slice them, but technically, I do the quote unquote aromatics first. So, anything um, that you consider uh, aromatics, herbs, garlic, onion, ginger, are all aromatics. So if you're cooking with them, it's best to put them in first. And by the time, usually you can start to smell them, that's when you can add everything else. It's just a good way to kind of approach. Now, since we can kind of smell those, we're going to add just a few peppers I cut up and the mushrooms. And because I was a little bit low on olive oil, I'm gonna add some vegetable stock in. So there's a little bit more liquid for when we add in the rice. And then what I'm gonna do is, now if I had um, Worcestershire sauce, that's what I would use, because that's personal preference. But this is just a little bit of soy sauce. Um, Rice loves soy sauce. And it's salty, it's umami. 
then it makes up for how few spices we were relying on to season the veggies. And now we are back, and now that these are all roasted, we have it and they have their little hats. Can you and show me the hat? Yes, I can happily show you the little hat. Here's the little hat. They're so cute. Um, and we have our, now this was just some fried rice we threw together. Um, it's really not complicated. Again, you could use really anything, quinoa, any grain. And what we're gonna do now is we're going to fill each individual one. So I'm gonna take them out. And they've cooled. Now make sure you're gonna wanna give them time. It's gonna be incredibly hot when you flip them over originally. So you're gonna wanna give them some time. It's a super easy, um, low maintenance way to feed more than one or two people that kind of provides each person with their individual dish. So, and we all like to have our own little individual yes. thing, right? Who doesn't love a personal pizza? <laughs> Now we get to eat. So I'm gonna pick this guy. They smell so good. They look so good. They're so easy to move around and look like they took a lot more effort than they did. Let me just take a little toothpick out. And then they're super easy to cut. Supremely good. It's just like a zucchini, but better. It's like more substantial and less less water. Yeah, exactly. Less water, less hollow, sort of. 
Much similar, of course, to a squash, right? But so easy cut. Now, I think they would be wonderful to serve at a brunch or mm -hmm. any kind of a dinner with family. Because Anything where there's more than one or two people. I mean, although it's good for that too, but they are such little personalized. Yeah. And they're adorable, aren't they? Mm-hmm. And they look like they take more effort than they do. Well, Super easy, they're really pretty. You can put just about anything in there. You don't really need to get anything special outside of what you already have in your pantry. And even if you can't get your hands on a few ball squash, you could do this with any squash. Mm -hmm. You can do this with butternut squash, acorn squash. Um, you can even do it with pumpkins. But out of all of my roasted stuff, veggies, I would definitely say this is my favorite. Which is saying a lot, because I really like butternut squash. But it's so good. Really. Okay, let's wrap it up. So before I go eat the rest of this, and then two other ones. I just wanted to say thank you so much for stopping by. Basil Future. Um, if you would care to subscribe, we would really, really, really appreciate it. We're trying to get to 500. And if you would leave a comment, let us know what you think, if you liked it, if you tried it, if you're thinking about trying it. Um, let us know how it goes. And if you could leave us a like or a dislike, I would prefer the like, but you can leave the dislike and that, that'll still help whatever we're doing here. <laughs> so anyway, thank you so much for stopping by again. I'm Ryan, and this is Basil Food Journal. And these are Cuba's Quaffles.